And now, sports with Joey Dubois. It's time for the Scout Mountain Ultras here in Pocatello. The event getting underway today with the start of the 100-mile race at Lead Draw Trailhead. It continues tomorrow with the 50-mile and 21-mile runs as well, with the 50-mile getting underway at 6 a.m., followed by the 21-mile at 9 a.m. Runners in the 100-mile have a cutoff of tomorrow at midnight, leaving them 36 hours to complete the course. But don't worry, there's plenty of posts along the way with all the snacks they might need. And while everyone, deservedly so, wants to talk about the winners after a race like this, race director Luke Nelson finds inspiration elsewhere. So for any of these runners, this is a huge accomplishment. And we have some professional runners here, and they compete in these all the time. But the ones that I find most inspiring are the ones that they take every minute of that 36 hours to get the 100 miles done, and super inspiring to watch them finish tomorrow night around midnight. Now time for some Legion baseball. The Razorbacks in action this afternoon over at Hallowell, hosting the Shelly Russets for a doubleheader. The Razorbacks win game one, 10 zip, but they're down three early on in this one. Alex win on the mound in game two. The breaking ball down in the way gets the strikeout. Into the bottom of the frame, runners on second and third, but Jackson Byington gets the backwards K for the Russets, but you can't keep the Razorbacks down for long. Garrett Keller sends one down the left field line. It gets past third base and into the outfield, deep enough to score a couple of runners, cutting into that Russet lead. Now Shelley is looking to respond as they step in. A runner on first, and Peyton Maynard flares one into right field. It barely stays fair, but he's on with the single, so runners on the corners for the Russets. Stockton Perry steps in, and he understands the assignment. Knocks one into left field, which scores a run and ties this game back up in the third inning. Now Keller, he had the RBI earlier. Now he comes on in relief, and he earns the swinging strikeout for the third out. The Razorbacks step back up to the dish. Isaiah Snell at the plate. And he flies one into right center field, drops in there, and it's a bit of a tough one to play. So Snell will end up at second base with another man over there on third. So Taylor Stringfellow steps up, and he gets a hold of one into a gap in right center field. The two runs come around to score easily. Stringfellow turns on the Jets. He's into third with a two RBI triple. The Razorbacks go on to win it 11 to 10 the final. The NBA Finals off to an exhilarating start. After a back-and-forth Game 1 yesterday, the Boston Celtics lead the series heading into Sunday's Game 2. It was a 17-0 run in the fourth quarter that sealed it for the Celtics. Leading the way was big man Al Horford, the veteran with 26 points on 6-for-8 shooting from 3. Here's Horford post-game. They're such a good team. Um, and for us, it was just, you know, just continue to, to, to play no matter what. Um, and, and our guys, that's what we did. Um, you know, it wasn't our best game, uh, but we, you know, we continue to fight and, and find different ways to, you know, to get this win. The finals continue on Sunday at 6 p.m. And tomorrow is the Gate City Grays home opener over at Hallowell. We'll have all the highlights right here on KPVI. That'll do it for sports. Back to you, Misty. Now, Joey, I don't have a horse in the race there for the finals. So just for you, I'm going to say go Celtics. I'll take it. I'll take it. Any <laughs> Celtics fans are welcome to join the bandwagon while you still can. All right. Thank you very much, Joey.